Hi, this is Bob Langes from Juniper Networks, and today we're going to take a look at JWeb, the Juniper Web Device Manager. I'm uh, looking at an EX3300 48T switch here, and I'll log in. When we initially log in, you're presented with a graphical view of the device, including the rear if you need to look at the management port for some reason. If you hover over the ports, you're able to see up-down status, uh, general port information. You're also presented with uh, the health status of the system, including memory, uh, you know, what, where the memory is allocated, CPU load, temperature, fan status, all that type of thing, and any alarms will show up here as well. When you click on the monitor tab, some things you may want to take a look at are the interfaces. If you click on that, it gives you a listing of the interfaces that are on the device. If you look down, you can scroll through the interfaces and see what's uh, what's up or down, quick up, down status. If you want to check on uh, traffic or other details, you highlight the interface and then you click on details. And then it's going to show us some data about that in terms of, you know, your general information, traffic statistics. And if it's an L3 interface, it's going to also show uh, your layer 3 interface information there as well. You may want to take a look at the system view and see general system information. chassis information and process information to see what's running on it and what percentage of memory and CPU load is happening at this point in time. Switching, you get to see Ethernet switching to see what the status of the switch is, MAC address information, spanning tree information. If your system is configured in a virtual chassis, that information is going to show under the virtual chassis information, but I don't have anything configured on this here now. You'd also see if you had any sort of routing going on, you'd see that information under the routing tab here. Like you can see, I have some interfaces configured, loopback interfaces, and just the information I have configured. But if I was running OSPF or RIP or BGP, I'd also gain that information from this tab as well. If you click on forwarding classes, you're able to see what forwarding classes exist. And then if you had DHCP running, you'd be able to get the information in terms of what's set up. I don't have it configured on the switch, but it's a good idea of what you can see. So those are common tasks for things that you would want to monitor. From a configuration standpoint, um, you could change things about interfaces. So if I click on the ports here, uh, it gives me a little reminder that I may want to commit these changes once I get them done. If I click on a port and I edit the port, I could change some things about that port role, which is basically a, a summary port role. VLAN options, which would probably be the Thing that you commonly do. So if I want to change this from an access to a trunk port, I could do that or I could change the VLAN membership as well. I just apply that and once I do that, that's going to apply it and then if you notice it's flashing to remind me, hey, you want to you want to commit these options so that when you make your changes, you can just go ahead and commit them and it's going to uh, commit and confirm that. So if I've done everything right, it's going to pass through with a successful configuration change. From the configure section, I can also take a look at your general system properties. So if I wanted to change the name of the system, I would just click on that and I'm able to edit that and type what I wanted here, uh, change passwords, all that sort of thing, and just confirm those changes. So that's easy. If I want to add additional users to be able to manage this switch, I would be able to add those right here uh, or set up my uh, method, other methods of validating those users. If I wanted to enable DHCP, I could do that right here. And I could configure global and I could add pools. So right now I don't have DHCP on any subnets, but if I wanted to add that, I'd click add. And then if you notice here, I have some asterisks and these are my required pieces. So if I just wanted to configure it for the 10 dot network, I could do 10 dot 0, dot 0 slash 24. And I'd be able to give myself an address range of 100, and maybe I want to go with 10. Dot. And then if I want to reserve any addresses for, say, servers or something else, even though it's not my range, I could add that there. And I don't have to fill in any of these other things, but obviously in a lot of cases I would. And I would just hit OK, and it would apply that to the configuration. I'm not going to do that right now because I don't want to break the switch that much.
Next thing you may want to take a look at are the CLI tools. And I could do a couple things. I could um, take a look at a viewer. And this will let me have a look at the configuration. You could see everything that is in the CLI in terms of the configuration. And it's helpful if you want to get to know more about Junos and the CLI to just take a look and kind of learn how that lays out because after a while it starts to make um, good sense. We also have this point and click CLI which is basically a section view because uh, Junos is laid out in a very clear hierarchical fashion and you're able to see so these are the main categories and if you look through the uh, the main config you're going to see these things uh, represented as well and you could do things like delete sections here you can edit sections here click on edit We've got interfaces here. If I wanted to edit one of these interfaces, I could just edit that interface there. And it's going to pull me just to that section of the config. So the last thing we'll have a look at is the maintain menu. So if I click on maintain, of course you have configuration management where I could see the history or I can upload a new config or I could set what is my rescue config, which you can invoke if you have a problem. Um, one thing that you'll do probably at some point is to upload a uh, firmware package. So you click on upload package and it's, you're going to be presented with uh, the ability to select this and reboot and then you upload and install package. And that'll go ahead and upgrade or downgrade uh, the firmware. If you bought additional licenses for the solution, if you check there, they would have those licenses and you're able to update those if you want to or perhaps take a trial. And then things that you may want to look at would be, uh, you know, if you need to do a reboot on the system because obviously you don't want to just pull the plug. And then from a files perspective, if you found yourself wanting to manage the files, you could do that graphically as well. So that's it for the quick look at JWeb interface. Uh, it's a great bridge for starting with Juniper or perhaps if you're not going to work a ton in the switch and you just need to get things done without learning the CLI. It gives you a way to do that. Uh, you know, Truthfully, if you are a CLI whiz, you're faster than you'll be in the web-based interface, but also um, that requires more uh, learning ahead of time right so if you want to get up and running quickly and you don't want to have to spend all the time learning Junos right away this is a great way to bridge that gap initially thanks a lot for listening